Hi folks, I wanted to take a few minutes and try to distill some of the things I've learned in the last few months working with students in live streaming video. I'd like to draw the connection between compelling social media education and a classic carpenter puzzle. The inspiration for this video came from a remarkable group of students I had a chance to work with in two technology classes, one last spring and another class this fall. But I have to tell you, I'm not actually a technology educator by training. I got started as an adventure educator, which is still something I'm involved in. Not long ago, I was cleaning out our rock climbing room and I stumbled upon this wooden box. Not knowing what it was, I opened it up and I put it on my desk. And as colleagues and friends would come in, we would try to figure out what kind of prop or game or puzzle it was. Well, it didn't take us too long to put a nail in here, and not long after that for us to start wondering if there was maybe somehow a way that we could balance all of the other nails on top of the one nail that was standing up in the middle. So, in other words, in a short period of time, we passed from being unaware of this challenge to becoming aware of the challenge, but it's experiencing a great deal of creative tension about the actual nature of the challenge. And then, after trying to solve the puzzle uh, together for a couple of weeks, I finally got fed up. I looked up the solution online, and I put the puzzle back in the gear room. So, what we found was that of the stages involved in solving this challenge, in other words, not knowing about it, deciding what it was all about, and then solving it, the most interesting parts were actually the middle bits. The actual doing it turned out to be less interesting. And I think this has a lot to do with how I teach at the New Hampton School. We're a small independent boarding and day school in central New Hampshire. And like I said, I teach technology. And up to this point, I had always taught technology much like any other course. I did my Microsoft Word unit and I checked for understanding. I did my iMovie unit and I checked for understanding. And then I did my internet safety unit and I checked for understanding. But what I've always wanted to do in technology is teach television production. But the big problem I'd experienced when I looked into teaching TV was that the, the tech side, the cable side, had always turned me off. I mean, I wanted to do compelling work with kids. I didn't want to rewire the school. So that's just what I had a chance to do this past spring. These students look slightly freaked out because they're about to be on live television. Live television on a setup that we rigged together for about $45 in about a week. The first class when we tried it, we had our engineers set up the studio. Studio. Our producers organized and ran everything. We uh, had our anchors write copy and put it on a teleprompter, and everything seemed great. Um, we gave it a shot, we turned it on, we were ready to go, and of course the first time it totally and epically did not work. So we went back to the drawing board. We uh, were using a platform called Livestream to stream our content. We practiced and rehearsed and learned how to use it. We learned how to manage our production team, multiple cameras and a producer, mixing everything together to mix live and recorded content that we pulled from YouTube. We sketched out everything really carefully. So we put the anchors here. We had them talking to a teleprompter that we ran off computer one. We uh, ran the audio and video into that computer and had the engineer set the whole thing up. We sent the combined audio video signal to live stream, which we then mixed in with uh, live content from our field reporters at another location and pre-recorded content that we pulled from YouTube. Uh, we had a producer producing the, the live show, which we sent on to an embedded player um, on our website. We double checked uh, that we had the bandwidth to make this happen. We were ready to go. We were fired up. We turned it on and it completely and epically didn't work again. So at this point, I had planned to do this really complex feedback activity where we were going to brainstorm what had worked and what hadn't worked and split into small groups and talk about our feelings and th this whole complex thing. And one of our students interrupted me as I was starting to present this and he said, look, Mr. Mundahl, let us try it again. I think we can do it. And so I said, okay. And it totally worked. It was remarkable. It, it was fantastic. The students were absolutely brilliant. Um, so after class, I went online and, and, and I bragged about it. And my colleagues uh, were interested and they, they started chiming in. And um, my technology director um, was like, this is fantastic. We'd love to see the show that you made. L can you send us the recording? And I said, recording? Oh my God, we had totally and epically forgot to record the show. So what I've learned from this is that compelling teaching of social media has less to do with checking off the boxes on the required elements and testing for understanding and much more to do with the nail puzzle. In other words, creative tension is good. Not knowing if it's going to work is good and investing students in wanting to try again and work harder to make it work is good. 
Asking students to produce real, thoughtful, creative content in a live environment where they have something on the line, that's really, really good. But hey, that's just my two cents. If you want to find out more about what we do or get in touch, I'd love to hear from you. And by the way, this presentation, it's licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike License, except for this image, which is licensed slightly differently. <laughs>